The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. We are living in the last days where the devil runs rampant and self-control seems a fleeting virtue. The malignant growth of sin, the moral decay we see in society today is a grave omen indeed. The scriptures warn us about the rampant sin that will pervade our world. And today, brothers and sisters, we can see the writing on the wall. Our world is in the grip of moral erosion, its foundation corroded by the acid of sin, with the chief perpetrator being the absence of self-control. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28 tells us, like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. Yes, friends, the human soul without self-control is like a city besieged. Its protective walls crumbled, leaving it defenseless against marauding invaders. Today, we see this image replicated in our world, defenseless souls falling prey to sin, consumed by carnal desires, their spiritual walls breached due to the lack of self-control. Consider the act of adultery. Individuals bereft of the strength to resist their illicit urges, descending into the pit of sin, indulging in sexual immorality. They know the harm they are causing, the lives they are shattering, but their lack of self-control drives them towards disaster. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 23 tells us, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In the absence of this crucial virtue, we see people turned into spiritual beggars, bankrupt of moral substance. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-4 through 4. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. In verse 3, there is one word we are going to focus on today, and that is incontinent. Compulsive spenders, gamblers, addicts, killers, idolaters, thieves, and those involved in immoral sexual activities represent some of the various manifestations of sin, but they all share a common thread, lack of self-control. Every sin committed across the globe stems from this singular factor. When someone steals, it is their inability to resist that impulse. Adultery, too, is a result of an individual lacking the willpower to divert their thoughts away from illicit desires, resulting in sexual misconduct. Self-control is a critical virtue in human life. Its absence paves the way for escalating evil. We should never underestimate the significance of self-control. We find ourselves immersed in a society that frequently promotes the idea of fulfilling our desires whenever we wish. It is a culture deliberately constructed to encourage individuals to lead lives devoid of self-control. The mantra is to, quote, live in the moment, to act according to our whims, whenever we wish, with whoever we wish, often with little regard for those we may harm along the way. The God of the Bible, however, instills in us, the believers, the importance of self-control. Once I heard a preacher profoundly state, God urges you to embrace self-control, while the world encourages you to get birth control. This observation rings true. The world we inhabit today seems to promote a lifestyle filled with sexual freedom and promiscuity, which is indeed a testament to the stark contrast between biblical teaching and worldly influences. Often we encounter individuals who understand the difference between right and wrong, who are aware of the repercussions of their actions, yet choose to proceed regardless. For instance, despite knowing the emotional toll of sleeping with someone without a genuine connection, people often still indulge in such actions. The answer is simple, a lack of self-control. The adversary, the devil, understands the significance of self-control. He recognizes that if he can lead people to abandon this virtue, it will be easier for him to entice them into sin. As stated in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, dangerous times will emerge in the last days. We currently live in these prophesied times, witnessing firsthand the happenings described in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. 
Scripture warns us that people will be bereft of self-control, indicating a time when individuals relinquish this vital restraint and have no safeguard against immorality. A lack of self-control signifies one critical fact, the absence of the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit begins to bear fruit in your life, one of these fruits is self-control. Possessing self-control is akin to allowing the Holy Spirit to guide your life. It is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit's influence within you. As Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 through 23 declares, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. When you don't have self-control, you may find yourself saying yes to things that you know are wrong. It could make you say yes to wrong actions, like sleeping with someone you're not married to, being unfaithful in your relationship, or watching unholy on the internet. It could even lead you to do things in anger that you'll regret later. When you lack self-control, you might make unwise decisions, and your life can feel like a leaf being blown around by the wind, landing anywhere with no control over where it ends up. Sadly, this is what's happening to many people in our world today. They are losing their self-control, pushed by the power of bad actions. They are doing things they don't want to do. They wish they could say no, but they find it hard to resist. They don't want to touch themselves in an impure way, but they can't say no. They don't want to watch things that aren't good for them on the internet, but they can't say no. They don't want to sleep with someone they're not married to or be unfaithful to their partner, but they find themselves unable to say no because they lack self-control. They don't want to lose their temper and break things, but they can't stop themselves. They don't want to spend their money on things they don't need, but they can't resist. In all these situations, what they really need is the ability to say no. And that's what self-control is all about, being able to say no to things that aren't good for us. It's about being able to make the right choices for our lives and not just going along with whatever we feel like doing in the moment. When we have self-control, we can make better decisions and live better lives. This issue of lacking self-control goes beyond the realm of sin, seeping into individuals' personal lives. It's evident when people buy houses or drive cars beyond their financial means due to a lack of self-control. Few things are as frustrating as being in a relationship with someone who doesn't exercise self-control in managing finances or controlling their impulses. I am of the conviction that this absence of self-control may be a more prevalent cause of divorce than we generally acknowledge. The ripple effect of a lack of self-control are not confined to moral missteps or financial imprudence. They can also manifest in various aspects of daily life. This might involve overeating, spending excessive time on social media. Certainly, we can observe a noticeable shift in people's behavior nowadays. Numerous individuals are squandering precious time on social media platforms, absorbed in the lives of others rather than focusing on their own. Consider how drastically your life might improve if you invested the hours you typically spend scrolling through social media into something more constructive. An average user spends two hours and 31 minutes daily on social media based on the most recent data. If we look at a 10 year old, we can assume that they will spend 3.4 million minutes on social media in their life. That's six years and eight months. Yes, you read that right. This is only an average user. So imagine those people who are above average users. There are people who are literally walking zombies because they are so vesicated on their phones. This is because of a lack of self-control. All of these scenarios underline the necessity of self-control in maintaining balance and overall well-being in our lives. When self-control is absent in a marriage, it can lead to a host of issues, ranging from financial instability to marital discord, ultimately resulting in the sad culmination of divorce. Therefore, it is essential to develop and nurture self-control, not just for personal, moral, and financial integrity, but also for the health and longevity of relationships. Right now, as I deliver this sermon, I know there are people among us dealing with hidden problems, all arising from a lack of self-control. Perhaps you're wasting your money on gambling, finding it hard to resist the thrill, even though you want to stop. Some of you might be trapped in the grip of watching improper things on the internet, unable to break free from years of watching porn. Despite your best efforts, you find it tough to stop because you lack self-control. It could be that you're struggling with issues like sleeping around, cheating on your partner, stealing, or lying. I urge you, 
Do not get comfortable with these wrong actions. Don't accept them as part of your life. They are your enemies and you must fight against them. Turn to the Holy Spirit for help. Let Him strengthen you in gaining self-control. Know that God hasn't given up on you. He hasn't abandoned you. So why then are you ready to give up on yourself? Stand up, continue the fight, and don't let go of the hope that you can and will overcome these struggles. With the help of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, you can grow stronger in self-control and beat these troubles in your life. Unfortunately, people beginning to change. Many people don't like what they do, but they cannot stop doing it. This is the sin, is taking control of their lives. Do you know how much evil is going on in the world? Do you know the things that people are doing in the world that is destroying them? Not everyone wants to do these things, but the power of sin is making them do it. Are you lacking self-control in your life? Have you allowed sin to take over you that you don't even know what you do anymore? This is a perilous time, and the devil is moving mad, making sure that no one has the power of self-control. One, pray for the Holy Spirit of God. Prayer stands as a powerful tool for overcoming life's challenges. Take the example of Hannah, who was unable to have children. Through prayer, she reached out to God and was blessed with a child. The strength of prayer is undeniable in Christ. If you pray for the Holy Spirit, you will receive the Holy Spirit. Indeed, you must obtain the Holy Spirit. Those who do not possess the Holy Spirit in these times will find it difficult to resist actions they wish to avoid. Consider those who engage in sexual immorality or those who harm others for financial gain. Not all of them relish such actions, yet they find themselves caught up in these wrongdoings due to a lack of self-control. This deficit arises from an absence of the Holy Spirit who bestows this crucial virtue upon us. God is ever willing to grant us self-control. It is not a gift He withholds. Why hesitate to implore God for this blessing? Reach out to Him today. Cultivate a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit and allow His influence to permeate your being. Self-control is one of the greatest gifts you can receive from God. Why? Because it shields you from making unwise choices that could jeopardize your life. God is seeking individuals who, in these final days, will steadfastly maintain their self-control. He is seeking those who can firmly reject any form of evil and immorality that presents itself, regardless of the potential rewards or fame it may promise. God desires individuals who can unequivocally denounce wickedness. Can God trust you to be among them? This also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.